Welcome to Statistics and Probability. And today, we will discuss about Introduction to Statistics. Now, what is statistics? Statistics is a mathematical science pertaining to the collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. Now, I will show you some applications and importance of statistics. It's too hot today. The temperature must be 35 degrees or more. Oh no. The stock market crashed and I suffered great loss. Need to make better investments. Leo Messi is the best football player in the whole wide world. These are some very general talks that you listen all day long. And it is not limited to temperatures, money, scores of football games, and your father's tax records. When we talk about numbers and calculations, mathematical equations come in picture. And they bring statistics along. Let's get right into it. First of all, let's talk about statistics and mathematics. Probability, dispersion, basic averages, and yes, what percentage of marks you scored is all mathematics. But, the way you get involved in gathering the data, and analyzing it, before jumping to results, is, application of statistics. In business planning, in the last business class, were you studying about the investment types? Then, a few days ago, there were some discussions about, analyzing business targets and, how to earn, some extra pocket money. That is also a part of statistics. See? You have been talking about statistics, without even realizing. In environmental sciences, when you talk about the temperature, or the area that is being deforested, there are a few numbers involved. Right? Not just this. When you talk about the aftermaths of carbon emissions or, when you discuss the temperature of the day, the facts are statistically proven. Well, it is all statistics, and it has seeped in, as an indispensable part in everyone's life. In healthcare, from taking complete details of the population, with respect to demography, and various other factors, to keeping a track record of your insurances and medical expenses, healthcare has been one of the major fields that enjoys the applications of statistics. Also, a record of your body temperature, blood pressure, and your overall physical health with the doctor, counts as statistics. Statistics in finance. Yeah, your pocket money, expenditures, savings, and everything else, associated with your financial health, can also be managed via statistics. Panning the focus to bigger things, even our governments rely on statistical data, to make huge policies that affect millions of us. Statistics and banking. Banks operate on the assumption that not everybody who deposits money with them, withdraws it at the same time. They lend the money out to people in need, and charge a fixed amount recurring at a fixed interval of time. In the form of interest, they use statistical approach to make an estimate of the number of deposits and claims for a particular day or a period of time. Statistics and genetics. It has always been used as a method to draw inferences from genetic data obtained from a subject or to study interconnection between several subjects and their traits. You might find it hard to believe that there is a scientific field concerned with developing statistical methods for justifying some traits showcased by subjects and drawing conclusions from genetic observations. Well, these have been some of the fields that utilize statistics to operate and to improve. Statistics is not limited to just these though. It's everywhere. Keep on looking for the beauty of numbers in everything. Before proceeding further, it is important to understand the basic concepts about the set of observations to be gathered in a study. So we have the term population. It is the totality of observations. We also have the what we called as sample. It is a subset of a population. As a representation, for example, we have here idea students. We will just select from IDS students. So we have here the grade 11 students as now considered as our sample. 
We also have the term data. Data are the values, measurements, or observations that the variables can assume. Data set is a collection of data values. Now, we will proceed on the two major areas of statistics. We have the first one, which is what we called as descriptive statistics. It comes from the root word describe. So what you're trying to do here is you will just describe the characteristics of the data. It comprises of those statistical tools which deal on the presentation of the observed data that can be done in various forms, such as tables, graphs, and diagrams, or describing the data through computation of measures that summarize the characteristics of the set of data. This can be represented using average, mode, standard deviation, and many more. Example, 9 out of 10 on the job fatalities are men. Expenditures for the cable industry were $5.66 billion in 1996. Now, we will proceed on inferential statistics. Inferential statistics consist of generalizing from samples to populations, performing estimations and hypothesis tests, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. Example, allergy therapy makes bees go away. Drinking decaffeinated coffee can raise cholesterol levels by 7%. These two statements here, here are considered as inferential statistics. These two statements shows that it is inferential statistics. It is because it needs to be investigated. Now, we have here data. Data is a collection of facts or information. And there are two types of data. We have quantitative and qualitative data. From the word quantitative, it comes from the root word quantity which means these are numerical information. When we say qualitative, it comes from the root word quality, which is a descriptive information. This is more of the attributes or the characteristics, and it is categorical. For quantitative, there are two types of quantitative. We have discrete and continuous. When we say discrete, this can be counted. Example of that is the number of siblings, number of flowers, that is considered as discrete, which is finite, and it, is, consists, it consists of integers. For continuous, this cannot be counted, and it is usually written in a given interval. Example of that is the height, the weight, the length, and many more examples of continuous. The weight is considered as continuous. It is because if you will weigh yourself in a weighing scale, what we did, we use rounding off. For example, if we weigh ourselves, we, have, we will just look at the, ah, it's 47 kilogram. But if you will truly, truly look in the weighing scale, you will see there 47.10357. You know, what we did, we just round it off. So weight is an example of continuous. Now we will proceed on the levels of measurement. The, the level of measurement can be subdivided into two. We have for qualitative and quantitative data. And for qualitative, this is more of description or categories. We have here the nominal level and the ordinal level. And for the quantitative, these are more concerns of the numerical information so this is for interval level and ratio level. For the nominal level and ordinal level, nominal level used for naming variables. It has identity property. Example of that is the laptop brands, the hair color, tribe, religion, and many more. For the ordinal level, it's almost the same with the nominal level. It is written in categories. However, it classifies data into categories that can be 
rank. So therefore, it has its identity property and order property. Example of that is the t-shirt sizes, military rank. Now for the interval level and ratio level. For the interval, it lacks an inherent zero starting point or lacks absolute zero. Absolute zero means the total absence of the characteristics being measured. Example is temperature. It is because if you will have zero degrees Celsius, it doesn't mean that there is no temperature. There is a temperature and that is a freezing point. So in interval level, the zero here means something. For the racial level, there exists a true zero, meaning it has an inherent zero starting point. Example, height, length, salary, weight. When we say absolute zero, it means walang wala talaga, as in zero, zero talaga. So height, if I will say zero centimeter, it only means that it doesn't exist. Means walang wala. Now let's try to answer this and identify if it is qualitative or quantitative and identify the level of measurements. Now for the blood type, so we have A, a, B, O. So those are the blood type. We notice that it is written in categories. So therefore, it is qualitative data. And it is considered as nominal level. It is because there is no ranking existing in the blood type. Now for the tribe, we have Surigaunun, um, Subanin, Higaunun. With that, it is considered as categories. So therefore, it is qualitative and it is nominal level. For educational attainment, we have elementary graduate, high school graduate, college graduate. So it is written in categories. So therefore, it is qualitative data or in description or attributes. So qualitative data siya. So yung level of measurement niya, manotice natin na merong order na nag exist so therefore, it is ordinal level. For the weight of rice, you have 5 kilos, 3.5 kilos, 50 kilos. So it is written in numbers. So this must be quantitative. And if I will say 0 kilograms of rice, it means that it does not exist. So therefore, it is a racial level. For the IQ, IQ we have 117. 110, we have 100, we have 89. So with the IQ, it is written in numerical form. So it is quantitative and it is interval level. Because if I will say IQ is zero, it doesn't mean that there is no knowledge a person has. Well, it doesn't mean na wala talaga siyang knowledge. It means na meron siyang knowledge is just that at that time maybe ang um, yung measurement hindi talaga siya na may measure ng maayos hindi kaya meron siyang sa uh, not feeling well lang at that time and there are other possible reasons you also have the age age is written in numbers <clears throat> so therefore it is considered as quantitative data and it is a racial level because if i will say 0 years old it means it does not exist but if you will say that that baby is one month old, so it doesn't mean it is absolutely zero. It's just 0 0.01 or 0 0.5 or 0 0.3. It depends upon the number of days and the number of months that a baby has been raised. Now we will proceed to the methods of presenting data. Presentation of data refers to the organization of data into tables, graphs, or charts so that logical and statistical conclusions can be derived from the collected measures, measurements. There are three forms of presenting data. We have textual presentation, tabular presentation, and graphical presentation. Let's start with textual presentation. The data that are being collected are presented in sentence form, or it is written in text. Example, 10 of the respondents are male and 13 of the respondents are female. For the, for the tabular presentation, 
is a systematic and logical arrangement of data in the form of rows and columns. Example of that is the frequency distribution table. It's a tabular arrangement of data into appropriate categories showing the number of observations in each category or group. Now I will show you the steps in constructing frequency distribution table. First, we need to find the range of the row data, and the formula for that is highest value minus lowest value. Next, we need to decide on the number of class interval, or simply classes, or the K, which is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log with base 10 of N, where our N here represents the number of observations. There are other formulas in other books. You have square root of N. Next is we need to determine the class size or class width or the C. And the formula of that is C equals to range over the number of classes or the K. Next, we need to determine the class limits of the K classes. And after that, we need to tally the observation in the frequency column. Now, let's have an example. So let's have here the data of the record high temperatures. This data represents the record high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for each of 50 states. Construct a group frequency distribution for the data using seven classes. So these are now the data. And for us to solve the range, we need to find the highest value, which is equal to 134. And the lowest value is 100. Now, to solve for the range, we have 134 minus 100 equals to 34. For the number 2, we need to decide on the number of class interval or simply the classes. So we need to use the formula K equals to 1 plus 3.322 log with base 10 of N. And we notice that there are 50 observations. So we have here 1 plus 3.322 log with base 10 of 50 equals to 7. That's why we got there as 7 as our number of class intervals. Now, let's determine the class size or the class width. We have the C here, which is greater than range over the number of classes. So for our range equals to 34, and for our K, which is equal to 7, so 34 divided by 7, we need to round it up round up so we got an answer which is 5. Now we will proceed to determine the class limits of k classes. After that, we need to tally the observations in the frequency column. In determining the class limits of the k classes, we usually start with the lowest limit. But in reality, you can start your own starting point. But for us to have uniform answers, we need to start with the lowest limit. Now, this is now our frequency distribution table. And how do we uh, construct this? First, we start it with the lowest value, which is the 100. Then we solve the C. Our C here, our C is equal to 5. So we have 100 plus 5 equals to 105 plus 5, you have 110, 115, 120, 125, 130. Then what's before 105? That must be 104. What's before 110? You have 109. After that, you tally. tally. Then for the class boundaries, so this now considered as our lower limits, and these are now considered as our upper limits. Now, for the class boundaries, if our data is a whole number, you need to add or subtract 0 0.5. But if your data has one digit after the decimal point, so you need to add or subtract 0 0.05. If your data has two digits after the decimal point, it must be plus minus 0 0.005. So therefore here, we have here a data which is a whole number. So we need to subtract 0 0.5 on the lower limit and we need to add 0 0.5 on the upper limit. So we got here 99.5 and 104.5. 104.5 is 
105 minus 0 0.5, you'll got 104.5. And 109 plus 0 0.5, you got 109.5. And if we notice here, these two here are the same. Okay? Have you observed that? After that is we need to solve for the class marks. To solve for the class mark, we need only to add the lower limit plus the upper limit divided by 2. So let's just say we have 104 plus a uh, 100, I mean 100 plus 104 divided by 2, you'll got 102. 105 plus 109 divided by 2, you got 107. Or another way, you need only to solve the first term, and after that, you need to add the C plus C, which is equal to 5, plus C plus C plus C, and you'll get the, these answers. For the frequency, you need only to base on the tally, so you have these frequencies. And for the relative frequency, we need only to divide frequency with the N. So you have 2 divided by 50, you got 0 0.4. 8 divided by 50, you got 0 0.16. 18 divided by 50, you got 0 0.36. So that's how you will solve for relative frequency. And if you sum it up, this must be equal to 1. For the cumulative frequency, what you need to do here is you need to accumulate the frequencies. So let's start with 0. 0 plus 2, you'll have 2. 2 plus 8, you'll have 10. And 10 plus 18, you got 28. 28 plus 13, you got 41. 41 plus 7, you got 48. 48 plus 1, you got 49. And 49 plus 1, you got the value of our N. So we are now done in constructing the complete frequency distribution table. Now we will proceed on graphical presentation. In graphical presentation, we have different graphs. We have bar graph, histogram, frequency polygon, frequency ogive, and pie graph. For the bar graphs, these are often used when comparing values from two or more groups or categories. If we base it on the data that we have for the temperature, we have here for our x-axis, which is the class limits, and for the y-axis, we have the frequency. And we have here, these are now the frequencies. If we notice, the bar graph consists of bars. So we have here for the graph, there must be a title, title of the graph. We must have here the y label, the x labels, and we have now our graph. For the histogram, this closely resembles the bar chart with the basic difference that a bar chart uses the class limits for horizontal axis while the histogram employs the class boundaries. Using the class boundaries eliminates the spaces between rectangles, thus giving it a solid appearance. So for our example, these are our x-axis na meron tayo dito class boundaries instead of class limits. Then we have here for the frequency. If we are to compare the histogram and the bar graph, for the bar graph, there are spaces between bars. But in histogram, you cannot see spaces here. There are no spaces between bars. And the x-axis is class boundaries. For the frequency polygon, it is constructed by plotting the class marks against the frequency. So what we have here, for our x-axis, we have the class marks. And for the y-axis, we have the frequencies. And we got here, for the first class mark, we need to minus C. So 102 minus C, that would be our starting point. And for our end point, we need to have the last class mark that we have on our table. This must be plus C for us to make it a polygon. It is because a polygon, it must be a closed plane figure. So a closed figure, I mean. So this means na this must be 
close. So there must be minus C and there must be plus C here. Now let's proceed on frequency or drive. It represents a cumulative frequency distribution. It is constructed by plotting class boundaries on the horizontal scale and cumulative frequency less than the upper class boundaries in the vertical scale. So here, we have here for our upper class boundaries. These are the upper class boundaries. Then we have here the cumulative frequency for the y-axis. If we will notice the difference between the frequency polygon and the frequency ogive, frequency polygon is a closed figure. However, in the frequency ogive, it is an increasing graph. But the similarities are they are both line graphs. Now let's proceed to the pie chart or pie graph. This is a circle divided into pie-shaped sections which look like slices of pizza. The angle of the sector is proportional in size to the frequencies or relative frequencies. Angle of a sector equals to the relative frequency multiplied by 360 degrees. So here, if we will notice in our pie graph, we have here for the frequency and its corresponding percentage. And we have here the legend and this composed our pie graph. So I hope you learn a lot, especially about statistics, methods of presenting data, as well as with the level of measurement. Thank you and God bless us all. Goodbye.